Okay, Rob, let's kick off with our, our banner story here, uh, PAL, which has, of course, a file chapter 11. There's another uh, hearing that's going to be happening on September 30. I just want to understand how do we treat this stock uh, right now? How are you looking at it? It's, of course, been suspended since mid-June, but now that things are getting clearer and clearer, uh, are you able to, to reprice this or revalue this in any way? Well, it's, uh, I think it's a bit too early to, to reprice this yet, but definitely the mere fact that it won its approval to access $20 million is a nice first step in its recovery. So given the fact that it's still suspended as of now, it's only going to give investors a lot of time to, to digest all these news. So even though it's entering bankruptcy, the mere fact that it's starting its recovery plan it should bode well for its future prospects. We can anticipate that even though the overall sentiment should still be bearish on PAL in the long term, as it approaches its um, unfro unfreezing in the Philippine stock market, we should see more and more investors able to understand better what's in store for this company. And it's a good thing that the company has actually signaled what their plans are in terms of how they are able to recover from this, uh, from this issue. But just in general, uh, is this now the time to be, uh, you know, going back to the cyclicals, going back to the travel stocks, uh, the tourism stocks? We do see recovery all over the globe, but it hasn't necessarily spilled over here in the Philippines. Is now a good time to be positioning or are the downside risks still very much palpable? Well, definitely the downside risks are, are still much, uh, very much there. We believe that the travel industry, while they may recover um, eventually, they are going to lag behind other, other sectors when it comes to Philippine economic recovery. So we are of the belief that it might be best to wait a little bit more, especially given the fact that we lag in terms of access to vaccines, in terms of vac uh, imposing vaccinations on our people it's only going to be a bit more challenging ahead of us. We have to remember that the Delta variant and all the other variants that could come after this pose a dynamic threat to the travel industry. And that's something that is going to be very, very hard to forecast for a lot of these travel companies. So we would prefer investors to stay in the more, in the safer sectors right now, which have shown some, some good recovery from the pandemic. Okay, let's get back to your safe sectors uh, later on. But still on the topic of PAL, how does this filing affect uh, Cebu Pacific? Uh, is there a specific you know, uh, 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 relationship between their restructuring and the performance of Cebu Pacific uh, as, as a stock? Or is this completely unrelated? And do you see more of these sort of uh, bankruptcy filings to be coming into play, not just for airlines, but for other distressed industries? Well, there are certainly overlaps between uh, between PAL and Cebu Pacific, given the fact that they are both in the airline industry. But we have to understand that they do have different business models. So we all know Cebu Pacific caters to a little bit of a different market from PAL. And so um, thankfully, as of now, they have not signaled, uh, signaled anything to that effect yet. And given, given the fact that... Um, Travel is very, very slowly inching upward and that Cebu Pacific is positioned to be a budget carrier. We believe that it's, it's not going to necessarily follow in PAL's footsteps. But definitely, yeah. again, the risk for industries that are exposed to the pandemic, that are most affected by the pandemic, continue to pose a threat to, to the bottom line of these companies.